for the readings and Nathan for the sermon. The reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 2 beginning to read at verse 1. The time came for the Lord to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set out from Gilgal, and on the way Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here, the Lord has ordered me to go to Bethel. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living Lord and to you that I will not leave you. So they went on to Bethel. A group of prophets who lived there went to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha answered, but let's not talk about it. Then Elisha said to Elisha, Now stay here, the Lord has ordered me to go to Jericho. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living Lord and to you that I will not leave you. So they went on to Jericho. A group of prophets who lived there went to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha answered, but let's not talk about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Now stay here. The Lord has ordered me to go to the river Jordan. But Elisha answered, I swear by my loyalty to the living God and to you that I will not leave you. So they went on, and fifty of the prophets followed them to the Jordan. Elijah and Elisha stopped by the river, and the fifty prophets stood a short distance away. Then Elijah took off his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided and he and Elisha crossed to the other side on dry ground. There Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what you want me to do for you before I am taken away. Let me receive the share of your power that will make me your successor, Elisha answered. That is a difficult request to grant, Elijah replied, but you will receive it if you see me as I'm being taken away from you. If you don't see me, you won't receive it. They kept talking as they walked on. Then suddenly a chariot of fire pulled by horses of fire came between them and Elijah was taken up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elisha saw it and cried out to Elijah, My father, my father, mighty defender of Israel, you are gone. And he never saw Elijah again. In grief, Elisha tore his cloak in two. Then he picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Today's Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 9, verse 2 to verse 11. The Transfiguration Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make these shelters as memorials. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they only saw Jesus with them. 
As they went back down the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. So this is today's Bible reading. May my words serve God, whose living word gives us life. We have lost so much and faced so much change over the past year. As I record this, my birthday is a couple of days away. Last year, Beth and I celebrated my birthday on a day out to London, travelling by train to a special lunch inside a restaurant. Following that, we went to a small and crowded theatre. All through the day, I was surrounded by people, especially so in the theatre, which had a maximum capacity of about 50. It is hard to remember that life was like that. This year, there won't be any trains, meals out, or trips to the theatre for my birthday. I will spend it at home and any nice food we have will be delivered to the house. Anything else would be illegal. And those are just very small examples of our losses. So many opportunities have gone. All those hours at school, all those jobs and businesses, all those we haven't been able to see, all the loved ones who have died. 
so much has changed, so much has been lost. We are not the first to find our lives completely changed or to deal with loss. Elisha knew all about that too. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we read how he was called away by Elijah from his life with his mother and father, killing his oxen and burning his plough. This was a massive change and a dangerous one. Elijah was a prophet, famous for his clashes with the kings of Israel. Elijah was not afraid to be ferocious in serving God. He had delivered God's curses on the land and ensured the slaughter of false prophets for leading the people astray. He also wasn't afraid to complain to God about how unfair his life was that he was better off dead. This fiery, difficult, emotional prophet had called Elisha to work with him, and Elisha had accepted. Elisha had chosen to follow this man and the God he served. And today, we heard how Elisha had to be separated from him by the very same God who had put them together. Confronting loss is hard. We know this to be true. In our lives, we face losses, and not just because of COVID-19. Doors close, possibilities disappear, not everything goes our way, and we do not have control. Hopes and dreams do not happen. Good things come to an end. Loss hurts. It hurts for us. It hurt for Elisha. We can see that in our reading. Three times prophets approach Elisha and say to him, do you know the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? And three times Elisha replies, yes, I know, but let's not talk about it. It's almost funny, but it is also profoundly sad. Elisha knows his mentor is being taken and can't speak about it. He can't face the conversation about the change to come, the loss of a man he loves and admires. You can sense him being cross at the people who keep reminding him that this loss is coming. Let's not talk about it. How often do we do this? Avoid the hard questions, the difficult conversation. Try to evade loss altogether by trying not to acknowledge it. How many times do you and I pretend something we don't like isn't going to happen? But of course, Not talking about the fact that Elijah is going to be taken by God does not stop it happening. Not talking about any of our challenges, any of our fears, does not stop them. God shows Elisha and us a different way. A way to focus on our fears with our eyes of faith open. In so doing, we gain the gracious gifts we need to be who God calls us to be. For Elisha has to see Elijah being taken. It is not enough to demonstrate his faithfulness by following Elijah to Bethel, to Jericho and to the River Jordan. That is good, but to receive the gift of Elijah's cloak, the power and authority of God given to a prophet, he has to see Elijah taken, has to confront the loss and be ready for change. To receive the gifts of God, he must be prepared to see God at work. And it happens. The loss and change that Elisha refused to speak about happens 
and he has his eyes open. And it happens while they are speaking. Elisha has three times refused to speak. But as he talks with Elijah, God's presence rushes by in whirlwind and fire. The mighty, mysterious, majestic God of Israel sweeps by, seizing Elijah from this world and from Elisha's sight. It hurts. In grief, Elisha tore his cloak in two. Elisha grieves, as we all grieve when we experience loss. How many times have you felt the pain of loss? Have you felt your own life torn apart? Elisha felt that pain. But he had his eyes open. He was able to see God acting despite the grief. Elisha used his eyes faithfully, meaning this moment of loss was also when he received the gift of new possibility, the gifts he needed to be who God called him to be. He loses Elijah, but he gains the cloak. His own cloak torn into, Elisha picks up the cloak that Elijah left behind. The cloak that signified God's power working through Elijah. The cloak that was famous throughout Israel as a challenge to kings and idolaters. Elijah had just used it to part the River Jordan, resounding with the hope of God's liberation in the Exodus. And this echoes forward in time to that horrific Friday when a curtain tore in two in Jerusalem as Jesus died on the cross, a ripped cloth that resounded with God's greatest act of liberation, love and hope, even in the midst of heart-rendering grief. Elijah's cloak now rests on Elisha's shoulders, and with it, the gift of God's power and presence. And now, Elisha goes back the way he came, ready for new things, ready to act for God in the world, ready to grow into the person God called him to be. And this offers a lesson for us, confronting the losses of the past year. We too have faced and will face things we don't want to talk about. Losses that frighten our mouths shut. There is the virus and all the pain it has caused. There is the shadow of death that has hung over all our lives, closer than it did before. And beyond COVID, there are other realities we do not wish to face. There is the reality of cruel injustice that sees billionaires pile up wealth whilst others live in misery. There is the reality of centuries of oppression caused by racism that continue to wound us all. There is the reality of the natural world being swallowed up by human greed. There is the reality of our stubborn hearts and fearful acts unwilling to confront God's reality because it forces us to change. And we mustn't let these realities go. We mustn't ignore them as we are vaccinated and we strive for things to be normal again. Having had our eyes opened by all this hurt and change, we would be failing as disciples if we kept our eyes shut. If we say, like Elisha did to begin with, yes, I know, but let's not talk about it. To keep our eyes and mouth shut about these realities would be a huge mistake, making light of our struggles and the struggles of others. 
It would make us liars, refusing to face the truth with God's hope of change. This means our loss and our grief are also an opportunity, an opportunity to take the gifts offered to us by God's grace, to have our eyes open to God working. If we are prepared to look this moment of loss in the face, if we keep our eyes open, we will find more grace, strength and hope than we could have ever imagined. We will see that God is already breaking in, that we need not be trapped by our fear, that we can dare to face reality. Dare we have our eyes open to see God's glory blazing in the face of Jesus our Lord. Dare we put our desire for normality on hold and be ready to look pain, grief and vulnerability in the face. Dare we pick up a new cloak, ready to confront the challenges of this moment. In the name of God, who took Elijah in fire and sent us Jesus in grace. Amen.